So I've got a bit of time in the fish room today, so I thought I'd do a quick video. Uh, thought it was about time that I actually showed off my fish room to you all and sort of talked you through what each tank is. So yeah, I'm gonna go through that. I'm gonna pop behind the camera so I can see what I'm sort of recording um, and talk you through each of these tanks. Uh, maybe, or maybe I'll try and do it in front and just pause it, run around with the camera and then come back. Yeah. Let's go with that. Anyway, so yeah, fish room, tour, brilliant. Let's start over here. Um, so, yeah. First of all, I want to sort of tell you about the rack behind me. So there is six tanks on this rack. Um, each tank is 90 centimeters long by 30 centimeters deep and 30 centimeters high, or three foot by one foot by one foot. The top three are all linked by a central sump, which supplies the water. And so all of them are these soft water, uh, black water tanks with different species, different sort of ideas going on in each one. So I'll talk you through those in a second. There are then two tanks exactly the same at the bottom. They are less black water, less botanical method um, style aquariums, and are independ independently filtered. So bottom right has just got a small internal sponge filter, uh, not air driven, it's uh, proper pump, sort of power head driven. Uh, and to the right of me, or to the left of the rack, is filtered by a smaller was I filter smart thermo um, so I wanted a high flow rate in that tank but yeah we'll get to that in a second so I'll deep dive into each tank and go from there so yeah I just wanted to sort of go through sort of give you the scale of these tanks so they're pretty big pretty sizable unit um, sort of the sort of species I keep which are quite small and that's sort of a theme through most of my tanks I like small fish in, in larger sort of space to make a more natural environment so we're going to start at the top right of the rack. Uh, I'm going to quickly pop some feed in and get all the fish out because they're quite shy, uh, especially the ruby tetras. They don't come out very much. So yeah, in this tank are a big group of ruby tetras. I think there's, oh, it's big. There's, I think there's about 10. I put 10 in and I've never found any dead or jumped out or anything. So there should be about 10 in the, of them in there. Probably could do with a few more, maybe get, let them get a bit settled. Uh, yeah, so, with them, there is a pair of Pistogramma Hongsloy, or the red line of Pisto. Lovely little dwarf cichlid. Uh, I always planned to keep a Pistogramma pair in here, and I fell up in love with that male as soon as I saw it in the shop. I just had to bring him home. Had a fair bit of breeding from them, breeding signs. Had eggs about five, six times in the last sort of three months now. Um, did once try and take the eggs away and raise them in a separate place and got one egg to the wriggling stage but they never sort of started being able to feed and so yeah i've also left them and they sort of get to five six days old the eggs that is they, they never actually become a fry being swimming around with the female so i'm not sure what going on there they've had a lot of chances i was kind of hoping that they might get a bit more successful as as it went on but it doesn't seem to be the case at the moment uh, as you can see that the actual the pair of them there are are swimming around quite nicely uh, displaying uh, the male's colours are, are really good and, and sort of this lighting doesn't do it justice I, I have pretty poor lighting pretty cheap um, basic lights on all of these tanks so it's something that I will look to upgrade in the future uh, but when I first sort of set up this rack money was well you know I had to build a fish room I had to try and do it on a bit of a budget so yeah um, otherwise in this tank I've got a big bit of java fern on some wood that was actually come, came from the, uh, the tank I featured before with the half beats samurai groundlings and stuff and I'll, I'll go in there because that's actually not in the fish room that's in the living room um, but I had an issue with that tank and the, the seam was about to burst so I had to swap it over it was different dimensions and two bits of wood that had java fern on were just not really um, wouldn't fit so I just lobbed it in here and it's been here ever since it must have been sort of half a year now unfortunately you can sort of see this white patch where I, it used to be sort of stuck to another piece at some point I the java firm will cover it and uh, I might relocate it I just sort of lobbed it in and it's sort of left there because the pistograms are moving breeding and I didn't want to disturb them too much all of the leaf litter is oak collected locally to me uh, it's oak twigs and bogwood and acorn cups as well so yeah all oak sort of a theme running through that tank keeping it quite um, 
sort of like it's under one species of tree, I guess. So that's enough about that tank. Let's move over to the top left tank and I'll talk a bit about that. Let's go zoom the camera in so you can see what I'm talking about. So you can see me in the reflection here. Uh, there's quite a lot of light in this room. I, I normally sort of turn some of the other lights off that, of the tank that I'm not filming. But today, because I'm doing all of them, I've left them all on. So apologies for the reflection and the bad footage. So this tank here is, is home to my free pet, free licorice grammy or parasimona species. Uh, I call them CF bin tank because I don't actually know which species they are. I originally had four, the male died within a couple of days of going into the quarantine tank. And um, because I don't know what species they are, I couldn't get another one to sort of place it. So I've only got one female. Actually, yeah, I think it was the female that died. I've got two males, one female. Um, this also used to be home to a pair of Samurai Grammys, which I lost the male, which I talked about in the previous video, and the rest have been moved across. You can see that the male there displaying really nicely to the female, and then the other dominant male comes out. And unfortunately, not doing it towards the camera so we can see the nice blue fins, but yeah. So the three of them get on pretty well. Each male has an end of the tank. Like I said, they're 90 centimeters long, so there's plenty of space for territory. And the female flits between the two and makes the, each one jealous. In this tank, um, there's also a sort of running, running theme once I get through the four of these. Running theme? Uh, running issue, I guess. And once I get through the four of these, I'll talk a bit about that. Uh, there's a few little bits of java fern, which you can see. Um, some water lettuce at the top, which was also in the other tank as well. Blackwater tanks having a bit of floating vegetation to sort of suck up some of the spare nutrients, but also shade some areas of the tank. It's really helpful for the fish. Leaf litter was all produced by magnolia leaves. As you can see, a lot of them have decomposed, and we've got these sort of, you can see here, sort of the tex different textures produced by the decaying materials. I haven't done a fresh leaf drop in here for a long time, so you can see it, it's all sort of decayed down into all those detritus. And all, because all this detritus is from botanicals, it's very low in nutri nutrients, it's not going to pollute the water too much, and very much just supporting the living little microorganisms that are in this tank. We've also got this Cariniana pod here, um, and at the start, well, should, this is a bale tree pod, um, there's another one back there somewhere. They're just little caves for the parasimonas to, to sort of hide and form territories and hopefully one day spawn in. Um, there's a few other pods in here, I think that was a, is it Calopterus, something like that? Um, not sure exactly. And some Casuarina, Casuarina pods, or cones actually, cones here as well. Just a few little seed pods to make it slight, look a bit more sort of tropical. And then over here, I'll just move the tripod and not pause it like I normally do, so I can't be bothered. I've got a lone Cryptocorn parlor, which is just, I threw it in there when I was really doing a tank that I had some in and it actually managed to sort of survive underneath all the leaf litter and has poked itself out in recent days so yeah that's that tank um, not much going on really with it parasimonas do not like being filmed and displaying too much but they're actually out and about quite a bit today so if we drop down I'll talk a bit about this tank here um, so let's zoom on in and I'll show you what we've got hiding away so again, I'm just going to add a bit of um, baby brine shrimp or artemia into this tank and get all the fish to come out and feed. There we go. So first up, you can see that the larger fish in there is a female epistogramma and lizabife. Um, I had a pair, never actually had any breeding activity from them, but a lot of displaying. You'll have seen pictures of him a lot on my Instagram. He was a beautiful fish to photograph. He did unfortunately jump out of the tank, even though the lids, the, the tanks all have sort of fairly good, well-fitting lids. Uh, there, there are gaps in all of them and he managed to escape. I think the female was a little bit too sort of pushy. Um, but yeah, the other fish are all out and about as well. There is two Nanastomus marginatus, dwarf pencil fish. Um, that's left over, they're sort of five years, five, six years old now. Um, and it's just the last of the group. These are actually interesting in that they are, I'll see if I add a picture in actually. Um, but yeah. I'll, I'll add a picture at the end when I stop talking about this tank and explain it then. And there are some green neon tetras in here as well. You can see, I think there's a group of 12, maybe, maybe 12? I think it's 12. Um, so yeah, that's what's in this tank. There's not much going on. Botanicals are, there's a pig and date palm in there, palm frond in there, which is this, the long one that you can see. 
across the top. There's a few twigs, um, all the smaller leaves are beech that I've collected locally and there's beech cones as well which I collect locally. Uh, again there's a couple of Carinianna pods in there as homes and breeding places for the epistogrammas. Um, and that's it in this tank really. Uh, I am going to add some plants in here one day so watch out for a new video on that. Back to the pencil fish, here is the uh, dwarf pencil fish and as you can see the red line in the middle elongates all the way through the body and that means that these are specimens that were originally collected from the Rio Negro rather than Suriname. Um, they also lack the yellow on the anal fin of the pencil fish from Suriname. So we'll quickly move on to the next one. And quickly going to add some food into this tank. It's bay brine shrimp again. It's really good nutritious, well not that nutritious unless it's enriched. It's really good food and these fish absolutely go mad for it. So yeah, in here they're quite skittish, there's not a lot of cover in the tank. There's this one area of jar on the bogwood. Again, same story as the piece before. I might actually move the, the top piece down into this tank and add some more sort of South American plants rather than jar ferns into the top one. Uh, and then there's just a nice sort of open area to the right of leaf litter. And on the left there is some java moss which I'm trying to get them to spawn in. So that's the tank. Uh, the fish are six banded barbs, Desmopuntis hexazona, and there are two uh, copper harlequin or lamb chop resbora, uh, Trigonostigma espy. Uh, these again, left over from a shoal I used to have sort of four and a bit years ago. Seems to be a pattern there. Um, yeah, they go mad for this food. Uh, they, they like to sort of shelter away in here. The male six banded barbs are this deep dark red and the females are a bit more orangey and uh, much plumper belly. Um, not much I have to say really. I did try these in with the half beaks but they were just a little bit too busy and made all the flu food sink down from their activity when feeding. Never had any aggression issues, they're just, just too active. So that's the uh, top four tanks, all botanical methods and as you can see on all of them there's a little bit of floating plants in some of them but not a huge amount. And a lot of the leaf litter looked a bit old. There was a lot of broken down leaves and the leaf bed wasn't mm. that thick. And now all of these tanks sort of used to have a good inch, maybe a bit more of leaf litter across the bottom of the, the aquarium. And most of the surface was covered in either water lettuce or Sardinia or frog bit. These tanks had a fair bit of cyanobacteria or blue green slime algae growing across the surface of the roots and botanicals of the water lessons and stuff and it was getting quite sort of difficult to just manage in a in a reasonable way so I'm trying to eliminate it so as such as you can see there's not a huge amount of it around when I'm filming now because I sucked up a lot of the botanicals that were covered in it removed all that flip plant and had the lights turned off for a while hopefully that's killed most of it off uh, now I need to I also meant I changed a lot of water so the, the, the water isn't anywhere near as brown and tinted as it used to be Slowly, I'm going to add some botanicals back in. Got to take your time with this. There's livestock in here. Any changes should be done gradually and not sudden. I did this process over sort of taking out the algae over sort of several weeks because I didn't want to do large 50% water changes and things like that on these tanks. Introducing fresh water without those sort of tannins and the sort of water chemistry that goes with that. Um, so I didn't want to swing it too quickly. So small sort of 10, 20% water changes regularly, slowly working with tank by tank by tank, removing those algae or those bacterial cells and combating this annoying problem. So yeah, over the next sort of week, I'm going to be slowly adding some more botanical back in, getting the colour back to the water and letting some of the floating plants grow. So that's enough about these tanks. I'll drop down and I'll quickly talk about the bottom two and then we'll see what the time is. I don't want to make this video too long because it's going to be a bit boring maybe for you. So I might split the video into the, 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 the tour into two. We'll see. Um, but yeah, let's drop down. I'll show you the last draw on the rack and we'll go from there. So I'm as low as I can go. I'm sat on the floor here. So you might just see sort of the quarter of my head at times. And I want to make sure that a lot of this tank is in view. So there's not going to be much to show you in here. Um, it's home to four L129 plecos, Hyponcistrus stebilitaire, I believe. Uh, so when they come out, it's generally when the lights are off and therefore difficult to film and photograph. So I don't feature these guys very much. So, but basically they come from higher flowing rivers up in the Orinoco basin. Um, so I've sort of 
gone for the rounded stone look for the aquarium. I've got fast flowing water going through there, so the Firemaster Filter Smart 200 Thermo. And I've got a wave maker or power head here as well. I think it's 6,000 meters per hour. So ridiculous like that. So really fast turnover. I've also added an air stone because it's summer and I'm replicating the higher water temperatures that would happen in those sorts of periods while it's cheaper for me to do so. So yeah, add an air stone just to make sure the oxygen is really high, oxygen concentration is really high, and that is what this habitat is like. Um, not much else to say really, it's a few tweaks. I do occasionally put a handful of leaf litter to encourage some of these sort of microfauna uh, that these fish might sort of graze on naturally. Uh, but typically these have an habitat so fast flowing that a lot of that gets quickly washed away without it being tangled up. And that's how, how I've sort of positioned these woods. I've got this big rock here and the largest twig is caught on that and that's a sort of drift, older age driftwood. And then the smaller twigs are dotted around sort of around that larger stone. So that's where everything gets trapped. Any of the leaves would just get washed on through. So yeah, that's what I've tried to replicate in that tank. Uh, not much else to say, really. Um, but it's quite a nice little, it's a little tank that I quite like, but I know it's, it's not the most interesting for other people, and especially not that most interesting for my partner, who thinks it's an empty tank. Like most of mine, actually. So yeah, that's it on this one. Let's move across and do the last one on the rack. And yeah, this one's a bit different. So yeah, as you can see straight away, this tank is green uh, and clear water. Uh, there's not a bit of wood or a leaf litter in sight, which horrifies me really, but hey, gotta do something different occasionally, don't you? Um, so I'll just flip the camera around and I'll get behind it and I'll show you what, and talk you through what's in there. It's not true aquascape, I didn't really think about the placement or anything like that. But yeah, let's do a deep dive into this, well, not that deep, two minute talk about this tank. So yeah, in this tank we have pearlweed, I think. I think that's the common name for it. I can't remember the Latin, I'll add it in in text. Um, Limophilia sessiflora is over here, mixed in with some tall bits of Cryptocon balance and some more over there. And as you can see, some of the leaves, I'll just zoom in slightly, I don't know if you can see that. Some of the leaves are starting to go a bit browny red as well, which is what happens under higher lighting, which in my other tanks it does not do, because obviously a lot less light in those. But yeah, these plants go a bit crazy, it's just sort of a home for my really shrimp and a few Corydoras habrosus, the salt and pepper Corys, that again, left over from the big group I used to keep and breed from. At some point I'm going to need to trim back this pearlweed, I'm going to add in some of my Nymphaea lotus when I close down the killifish tank, and also the clown killifish will come down into this tank as well. So it'll become sort of clown killifish and shrimp tank, and hopefully I'll see some breeding behaviour and some of the eggs getting deposited in the fine leaf plants. I also sort of just use it to grow some plants that I don't want to throw out completely, but I don't have a tank for at the moment. Um, Limnophilia is quite useful, it grows really quickly and sucks up sort of nutrients, so I can take some cuttings of that and put it in some other tanks that I might not want it in there forever, but I can use it in the initial phase to sort of, sort of try and reduce the amount of algae I get. I can probably do the same for this um, pearlweed, it goes a bit crazy as you can see. And yeah, I, I'm going to keep a, at least one Limphaea lotus in here just to just to say that, just to keep one in case I, I want to use it again, and some other plants. So yeah, uh, that's it really. The stone, I think it's Serious stone, is it? I don't, I don't really know. I just picked up some grey stones from, actually from an old tank. It was just not being used, so I just popped them in and made a little sort of display out of it as a holding tank. And yeah, that's it. As you see, there's a small filter and a heater in the back there, and it's lit by a flugel aqua sky across the top. And it's enough to get them cryptocorns to turn red, which is great. Um, yeah, nothing else to say. Let's move on. So I've now popped the camera on the other side of the room and now you can see what I was stood behind while I was filming. So on my right here, this is my knife fish tank. You would have seen a video of the adults uh, knife fish. I think it was the first video I actually posted on here. And I talk a bit about them. So I won't again go too far into that. Maybe just, just scroll down. I'll pop a link in the, in the description perhaps and you can check out a bit more about sort of what they are, but I will talk about them in a bit in more detail. Behind me I have a quarantine tank on my left or on your right. Uh, it's currently empty, but there is a bucket on the floor with some new fish in and that's why I'm spending a bit of time in this room. 
So they're currently in the dark in a black bucket, so there's no chance of me being able to film them, but they are some more pencil-ish, but a different species. I've not been able to find any Rio Negro dwarf pencil fish in a shop available anywhere, so I've decided to go for a different species, and I found today uh, up at Maynard Aquatics in Fulton, you'll all know that from MV and the shop map. They had Nanostomus tripatacata, a free line to catch fish, and I got a nice group of turnips, so they're going to go spend a month in quarantine before coming to join the green nails and the other two pencil fish. Still on the lookout for another nail of the camera Elizabethae, but that can wait for now. So that's that tank. Then in the middle, we have a, my Parasimonas sort of no feed project tank. It's Parasimonas linkii, uh, it's another species of licorice grammy. Uh, again, there's other videos on the build and stuff like that, so I won't go too much detail on there. As you can see, lots of floating plants. The emergent ferns are doing okay. And there's a bit around you on the leaflet because this tank, this light is so bright. It's a Superfish Scaper 45, really good little kit, and the light is probably a bit too bright for a botanical method of wearing. So, brilliant for scaping, I really recommend that tank. And then in the corner, tucked away, is another quarantine tank, nursery tank, breeding tank. I tried to put the six panda barbs, a couple of the pair in there, and breed them in the moss. It didn't work, so I, they got too scared and they just weren't interested. So instead I'm going to try and breed them in situ and move the moss over when there's eggs in it. But there's also two little, um, actually, I'll get the camera, I'll bring it over. So as you can see, there's two tub of containers with water in here. And I'm not going to be able to film it and talk about it too much, but I will try and put some footage as best as I can in there. In the right, there is one baby night fish. It's about a week since it was laid I think and it's probably it's just probably about to start feeding. So I've added some rotifers and some young Daphnia. I did feed it some Artemia the other day. I can't really see any signs of it eating yet. It still looks to have a bit of a yolk sac. Um, but yeah, so that's in that one. And in the left I collected 15 more knife fish eggs from the tank three days ago now. I can see a bit of movement in a couple of them but I don't think that they're too many. So I don't think the fertilization rate or the development success rate in this species is great, but I'm getting eggs, uh, which is great. So here you can see sort of a, a week on from being laid and he's a nice swimmy little guy. In with it, you can see lots of little sort of detritus worms or little sort of planaria type things and tiny microscopic life. That'll provide a bit of a food source in between me feeding it. Here, the sort of three day old egg as you can see there is a little fish developing in there and wiggling around it's really cool so yeah this is the nice fish tank this is where the adults are and this is where i'm collecting the eggs you can see this little tube here actually has two small holes on either side and now that is where the males deposit the eggs so they'll spawn the males will pick up the eggs and pop them through the holes for, to be safe they probably use holes in wood and sort of plants and stuff in nature but in captivity anything seems to work and this little tube with some holes in is brilliant because so I can see when they've laid and I can collect them and move them to a different tank to be raised in. I really want to try and be successful with rearing this fish. They're not really that available in the UK, I don't know about other countries. Uh, they're Brachyhypopinus gordario. Um, but yeah, as I said I'll, I'll pop a link in about sort of a, bit, a video where I talk a bit more about them. Um, but what I wanted to say, you'll see that the water level is reduced. Um, this is to simulate the dry, hot season that these fish go through, and that is what triggers spawning. They are not spawning all year round. They are temperate, or probably more to a temperate species. They can drop down to sort of 16, 18 degrees quite happily in captivity, and up to sort of 27, 28. So because I've got really hot spell in the UK, it's cost effective to replicate what they would have in natural nature as well. So I'm letting the temp temp tank, tank temperature rise up to about 26 at the moment. I'm lowering the water level to, again, that's what would happen. They'd be in shallower areas of water as those flood waters proceed. Um, I'm not water changing the tank as much, so I'm actually letting sort of a few more of the sort of bad stuff that we don't want accumulate in the water, because this is what would happen in nature. They would, obviously, I'm keeping a close eye on it and not letting it go too far that it would be damaging, but these are all spawning triggers for the fish. So I'm trying to replicate that and it seems to have worked. In the last week I've collected 20 eggs and I didn't collect any on the winter period where I did lots of water changes 
much cleaner water, much cooler water, and less often feeding. So this seems to work, and I'm really hoping now that every year sort of I can get this predictable batch of eggs come through in the summer, and maybe hopefully get quite a few uh, fry and then grow them up to be available for people to buy, or take them to shops, or fish clubs, or something. People that are passionate and want to keep these awesome fish but can't house the big ones that are commonly available. So yeah, that's this tank and that's the fish room, that's everything. So I'm going to crack on and get these fish acclimatised and put into their nursery tank. Got a few water changes to do. So I'm not going to go into the main house, or the main house, my house, not the fish house, um, and to show you the two tanks because there are videos on there and I have covered those in quite a bit of detail before. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you can like, subscribe and all of those sorts of things. I don't normally say it at the end of videos, but I think it will really help my channel grow and hopefully keep me interested to create, keeping on creating sort of video content, not just photos and stuff, which is what I normally do. Um, so yeah, thanks for all the support so far. I'm quite surprised at how sort of many people are watching my videos at the moment. It's only just me just rambling. So yeah, appreciate that. Appreciate you all. Hope you enjoyed it. Any questions? feel free to ping them across to me in the comments or on Instagram. Always have a talk through and I can give you a bit more details on the setup of this fish room.